Hi everyone, and welcome to Jam Academy. In this example, we have a, an object, probably a car, of mass m that moves in a circular orbit with a constant velocity v along the inside of a cone. Now, we are going to assume that the walls of the cone is frictionless. The cone makes an angle of phi with respect to the vertical axis. We are demanded to calculate the radius of the orbit of the object in terms of the given information. So I'm going to redraw the diagram um, here. We have the inside of a cone looks like that. So this is our object. This angle is phi. We know that the weight acts vertically downwards. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. Take note about that. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. Now, we need to play around with the angles a little bit. This angle right here is phi, which is equal to that angle right there because the corresponding angles. Um, it's easy to prove that geometrically. You can actually submit this to earn extra credit, um, but it's pretty straightforward to prove geometrically that this angle is equal to this angle, which is equal to that angle. So if we resolve the the force n, we have this will be fn cosine phi. And uh, this will be Fn sine phi. And if that is the case, we know that the sum of forces along the y direction is going to be equal to Fn sine phi minus mg. All of that should be equal to zero. That means that Fn, the sine of phi, is equal to mg. Let's call this equation 1. Similarly, this is the force, the summation of forces in the radial direction is going to be equal to ma radial. While we are doing this problem, this is what I want you to be thinking about. The car moves around on a circular track inside a cone. So what really provides the centripetal force needed by the car to move around the circular track? Remember that the cone is assumed to be frictionless. Um, so when you look at the only force acting towards the center is the component of the normal force. If this was a multiple choice question, I will ask you that question, what provides the centripetal force? You will have the weight, the normal force, uh, Fn cosine theta, Fn sine theta. Now, I did this before and most students thought about, said, the normal force. Actually, it is the component of the normal force along the horizontal axis or along the radial direction. It is not strictly the normal force. Uh, keep that in mind. So we now have um, negative Fn cosine theta equal to negative m v squared all divided by r. This would mean that fn cosine theta is equal to m v squared over r. Let's call this equation 2. So the question is for us to calculate the radius how do we calculate the radius? We need to get rid of Fn. And the best way for us to get rid of Fn is to divide equation 1 by equation 2. 
So if we divide equation 1 by equation 2, we will have Fn sine theta divided by Fn cosine theta. This will be equal to mg divided by mv squared divided by r. You can see that the Fn's cancelled. Now, sine theta over cosine theta is simply the tangent of theta. The m's go away. So you will have rg divided by v squared. And if that is the case, this would mean that r is equal to v squared, the tangent of theta, all divided by g. And that will be our answer. So this is the radius of the circular cone. Thank you so much. I do appreciate the commitment for this course. If you have any question regarding this problem, uh, please ask in the discussion forum um, below this video. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Bye-bye.